victim blaming of Ms. Diallo. To urge District Attorney Vance to look at the facts of the criminal case, as well as Mr. Strauss-Kahn's history of misconduct. To cease leaking of information pertaining to the case. And to take into strong consideration Ms. Diallo's medical report, which includes testimony consistent with what the accuser told police, and which lists the cause of injuries as rape. And last but not least, to take rape serious. Yeah. The only true principle of humanity is justice. And we are here today demanding justice for Ms. Diallo and to all victims of sexual assault and rape. The Dominic Strauss-Kahn case continues to confirm what those of us working every day to end sexual violence see time after time. That rape and sexual assault are about power and privilege, not sex or seduction. Dominic Strauss-Kahn has several layers of privilege on his side, such as his wealth, his gender, his racial and national backgrounds, his influence, and his political power. Miss Diallo has none. Consequently, it is her background and credibility that are on trial with her chances of seeing her day in court dwindling by the hour. Our work with survivors of military sexual violence reveal that these dynamics of power are across the board. The vast majority of those who report sexual assault in the military are junior enlisted service members and their perpetrators and those who further traumatize them by sweeping their accounts under the rug are often in their chain of command. Status and privilege are used time after time to shut survivors out, to dismiss cases, and to allow perpetrators to offend again and again. This is a systemic problem, one that goes far beyond any one case. The way Ms. Diallo has been treated is outrageous, but not surprising. Survivors who come forward to report assaults face further trauma by the personal vitriolic attacks in the media, by the public, by their perpetrators, and even by the court system that is put in place to protect them. Call on Cyrus Vance to allow Diallo the right to a fair trial. And as fellow members of the media, we call on the New York Post and other media outlets to exercise journalistic responsibility and cease victim blaming with this case and all cases of sexual assault. Nafi Sati Diallo, a woman who is intensely vulnerable, both personally and economically. An immigrant, a low-income woman of color, a single mother to a young daughter. She is also a survivor of sexual violence who in recent months has come forward with her story. Her courage and her determination to come forward to help other victims of sexual violence forward with their story. Alia Tylim and Allison Turcos representing a coalition against sexual violence. We believe that a woman at her place of work, on the street and anywhere, is not an object. She has a right to defend herself from sexual advances wherever she is. So as soon as the victim came forward, what happened was that she was demonized, she was vilified, her pain was erased, her story was not believed, and every attempt was made to cast her in a mold of uh, someone who didn't, was making things up for a benefit. And in the process, what we did was we let the perpetrator go. Even today, the New York Times call, continues to call her, refer to her as just a maid or the hotel maid. And I am really outraged by the fact that every mention of DSK is always Mr. Strauss Khan, who has the potential to be the Prime Minister, who had the potential to do great things in his life, while they continue to portray her as someone who is outside of this country, a non American, a poor woman, and a hotel maid. She does have a name. So I'm outraged that the media will not pick up and give her the respect that's due to her. People ask me, what has this done to you, and what has this done to the work that you guys do? And let me tell you something. It has made us feel like we have to live every day with the fear of rape hanging over our heads. That it's inevitable that we will be raped one day. That if you report rape, then you will be scrutinized and demonized. That you better have the money to engage your own investigators to figure out what's happening in your life. Ending rape means ending this rape culture. Asking the right questions, not asking how she could have changed her behavior, but asking how people can stop raping others. The problems in her country, in Africa, are caused in many ways by the tremendous poverty that is brought about by the debt that this country 
uh, Guinea is to the International Monetary Fund, which until the moment that he raped this woman, uh, he was part of administering this incredible forced poverty on the country. So she came to this country and she worked in this position as a person who worked as a hotel worker and like many other hotel workers who are women face the same kind of treatment by very wealthy people who can afford three thousand dollars a night as was pointed out at the conference to treat the women who work there as if they were objects. The problem of rape is in fact a problem of power as was pointed out in the conference and this man exercised his power in his official capacity as a head of the IMF and he also exercised it as a man without any with a, a totally brutal attitude towards women which is long expressed by his actions even in France even in Europe